Hey everyone, we're going to do limits with infinity where, um, limits um, with infinity where you have something like um, x squared over x. So if we put in large uh, numbers in here, what's going to happen is this continues without bound because the numerator is going to be quite a bit bigger. So let's just put... Um, um, let's put like a hundred, let x be 10, so that's a hundred over 10, which equals 10, or we could put even larger numbers in here, but what you're going to end up getting is, uh, an asymptote that's a horizontal, it's a slant asymptote, so it's just like a, a line like this. Instead of a horizontal, you get a kind of more like a diagonal asymptote. So basically, what you would do is you do long division or divide, and that gives you your um, asymptote. You use long division, synthetic division. In this case, we know right away when you divide, x goes into x squared, x times. So my a uh, slant asymptote is y equals x. Okay? And that's basically it. Now, if you want to do some other ones, we're going to have uh, the limit x approaches infinity over, say, x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x plus 1, then you put large numbers in here, what you do is just divide. You go x plus 1 goes into x squared plus 2x plus 1. You can do long division. So it's going to be x. When you multiply, you get x squared plus x. And we're going to subtract both pieces. And a lot of people like to put the x here, so let me do that. I always put it in the wrong place. So let me put it in the right place. So that's going to be x squared if you subtract plus x. Now, um, from here, then you drop down the 1. Oh, this equals 0, so that's out. You subtract, bring that down, and so this is going to be plus 1. You multiply, you get x plus 1, and you subtract, and you get 0. So in this case, my oblique asymptote would be y equals x plus 1. Okay, let's do one with the remainder. Let me just make up a crazy one. Let's say we have the limit as x approaches infinity of um, x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x squared plus... Uh, let's put 1. So we're going to go ahead and divide. Oh, well, this has to be degree, 1 degree less. So let's divide. And you're going to uh, go ahead and put the x here. So you get x squared plus x. You subtract both pieces. That cancels. That's going to be 0. You subtract, you get 2x plus 2. Did I make another good one? So I'm going to go ahead and put plus 2. So that's going to be 2x plus 2. Subtract, you get 0. So basically, I did make another good one. It doesn't have a remainder. So our oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 2. Now, if you let me try and make one with the remainder. Um... Let's just let this be x plus 1. Let's let it be 5. Okay, so let's do this. And divide. So multiply by x. So you get x squared plus 5x. And you subtract. 
and you're going to get 0, bring down the 3, and you notice that you can't do anything more because this all zeroed out. So this would be your remainder. This would be plus 3 over x plus 5. Well, this is insignificant when you're talking about limits. So we disregard it just like we did in the other ones. And so our oblique asymptote would just be y equals x. Now, bottom line is, when the degree in the numerator, and I'll write this out again, so you said r some rational, which equals um, quotient here, p of x over q of x, and we have a, we're going to let n be our degree, this is m, and then we just go down, Do dot dot dot. And at the very end we get a sub zero, b sub zero. So basically, when you have something like this, if n equals m plus one, so it only can be one degree higher, then you're going to have an oblique asymptote, which is a line. So something with the y equals mx plus b. Okay? And that's all. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.